Good day everyone, today we are going to talk about one-dimensional arrays. Okay, if you would like to know more or if you would like to know about the introduction to arrays, the basic concepts of arrays, I have included a link on the description for you to check it out later on. Okay, so when we say a one-dimensional array, it is an array in which the elements are arranged in a list form. So to understand this better, we have here the different basic operations that are being performed using a one-dimensional array to support its definition. Okay, so these uh, basic operations are initializing the array or um, array initial, uh, initialization. And then we also have reading data into the array. We also have storing output data into the array and finding the largest and or smallest element in the array. So here are the basic operations that we can perform okay, on one dimensional array. So there are still a lot of operations that we can perform using this particular array, but I, already, I only included four um, because these are the most commonly used basic operations performed. Okay, so later on, I will also be showing you different types or examples of one-dimensional array programs. And I will try also my best to explain it, the lines of codes that will be provided. Okay, so um, whenever we are going to use, if we are going to use the data type numeric, the common operations that are usually um, being connected to this particular data type, the numeric data types, are to find the sum and average of the elements of the array. So those are the common operations used. But each of these operations requires the ability to step through the elements of the array, which is easily accomplished by using a loop. Okay, so basically, when we say loop, it's just a circle that um, it is looping, no? bumabalik siya, uh, like a circle. Ayan, pabalik-balik siya. Okay, so if you are talking about loop, usually we think about the conditional statements, the repetitive structures. Okay, so here we have the for loop or the for looping repetition structure. So basically, if we're talking about for loop, we have three different um, parts no, that we need to consider. So we'll, for example, we have 4x is equal to 1, x is less than or equal to 5, x plus plus. Okay, that is an example of a for loop. But here, I've included the different parts for us to consider later on. I will also give an example for us to understand better. Okay, so you know, the first part uh, here, do not forget the word for, and then we also have open and close parentheses, and then inside we have the um, three different parts no we have the initial expression or initial initialization and then it was separated by semicolon we have here one semicolon and the second semicolon here okay so the initial expression or initial initialization and then you also have condition or the logical expression and then the third one is the update or uh, update expression Okay, so those are the three, uh, three different parts that you can see on a for loop. And then you can also see on a for loop, uh, open curly braces, and then inside we have the statement wherein we may include the Java output statement. But sometimes we are not uh, going to, uh, sometimes hindi ginagamit or hindi sila naglalagay ng curly braces. So for example, we have here a for a statement, and then we have a Java output statement. So it's okay. So let us also keep in mind that a for, uh, the word for is a reserve word, and they are being separated with semicolon. So when we say reserve word, those uh, these are the words that we cannot use as the names of our programs or names of our um, uh, projects. And yung mga names ng projects natin, no, yung programs natin, we cannot use it because it is a reserve word. There is an intended task or there is an intended work for that particular word. So, basically, we have different words, reserve words, no, in Java programming language, but for is one of them. So, if you would like to know more about reserve words, these are just like the if, for, while, and yung mga ians, yung mga ganun. Uh, those are the examples of reserve words. So, so much on that. So, it says here they are separated with semicolon. So, I will uh, be showing you an example, just a basic example for us to understand more about for loop. Okay, so basically, um, these are the things that we need to consider 
on how to execute the for loop. So the first one is the initial expression, is when the initial expression executes, yun yung first part niya. The second is that the logical expression is being evaluated. And if, yan, meron tayong condition, if the loop condition evaluates to true, you are going to execute the for loop statement or execute and execute the update statement. And then you're going to repeat this step 2 until the loop condition evaluates to false. So, hindi yan nagtatapos. Yung gaya yung sabi ko kanina, parang bola, parang circle yan. Hindi yan maglo-loop or hindi yan matatapos na gumulong unless yung condition natin ay magiging false. So, to understand this better, we have this simple example. Okay? Hindi siya, wala siyang ano no, wala siyang curly braces. Here, it's okay na ganyan, diretsyo na siya. It's okay. So, it will still run. It will still serve its purpose. Okay? So, we have here for integer i is equal to 0, i is less than 10, i++. plus plus. So, basically, we have three different, different parts here. We have the initialization here. Um, the integer i is equal to 0 and then we also have the condition i is less than 10 and we also have the update which is the i++. So, titignan lang natin no, kung paano natin i-identify later on paano natin isusulat yung for statement natin. So, basically, here on our first or on our for statement, uh, meron tayong integer i is equal to 0 as initialized value. Yung initialized value natin dito is 0 and then the variable name here is letter i and the data type here is integer. But we can also make use of uh, different data types that are available. We can make use of float, we can also make use of um, double if you are dealing with um, numbers with decimal places. But here, we are using integer that is uh, why our, ano, our, our output will be uh, a whole number. Okay? So, we can include integer, the word integer here inside the open and close parenthesis, but we can also declare it na sa unahan. So, for example, integer i uh, integer i and then semicolon and then no need to include the int here. It's okay. Here naman, dito sa pangalawa, we have i is less than 10. So basically, we have a uh, condition here. Yung letter i daw dapat. Dapat emit ito ha. Um, dapat emit natin itong condition. There is a particular condition that we need to meet. Okay, the, the relational operator that is being used is less than. So basically, um, those numbers that are less than 10 will be the output. Okay. And then we also have um, update here na I++. So, incremental siya. You are going to add 1. So, pag nag-false po yung condition natin dito, it will stop. The loop will stop. So, basically, meron tayong Java output statement dito. System.out.print and then um, open and close parenthesis I. So, kukunin niya yung value ngayon ng letter I or yung variable natin na I and then we are going to include a space also. Thus, meron tayong double quotation marks na nakalagay dito and space yung nasa loob niya. And, mind you, uh, mind you also that we are going to use the print. Yan, meron tayong um, ginagamit natin yung print. That is why yung output niya ay ganito. So, yung magiging output na for a statement natin is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Bakit hindi na-include yung number 10 dito? Kasi yung condition natin, if you would like to uh, check, wala po siyang equal sign dito. Kaya 10 lang, uh, kaya 9, hanggang 9 lang po siya. So, 0 is 0 less than 10, true. Then, I++, it will print I, 0. Okay, pagbalik doon sa loop, magiging 1 na siya. Is 1 less than 10, I++. And then, i-preprint niya yung uh, value, yung, yung new value ni I, which is 1. And then, babalik siya dito sa loop natin, magiging 2, and so on and so forth. Hanggang sa maging number 9. Pag naging 10 na kasi yan, pag naging 10 na yung value ni integer I, uh, i-evaluate niya dito sa my condition, is 10 less than 10. So, it will become false. Ay, matatapos na siya doon sa loop, magpo-false na siya. So, yung output natin is 0 to 9. Meron siyang space sa gitna kasi nilagyan natin dito sa Java output statement. And then, yung ano niya is horizontal kasi print yung ginamit natin. Pero, pag gumamit tayo ng print line, pagbaba po yan or vertical. Okay? So, now let's proceed. Uh, so, basically, these are the things that we need to, to apply later on, no? On the different samples of the one-dimensional array. So, we have uh, first the initialization or if you would like to initialize a particular array. So, basically, here we have integer lists or integer array lists and then meron siyang size na 10. Itong uh, code na to, int 
and then least is equal to new int 10. Basically, and then semicolon. Let us not forget yung semicolon. Ito lang yung makikita natin sa program. Pero itong nandito sa side niya, this is just a comment for the document page, documentation purposes para alam natin kung para saan yung lines of codes na yon para hindi tayo ma-confuse kung ano yun, para mas maintindihan po natin. So, sabi niya dito, list, which is the name of our array, is an array of size 10. So, basically, dito natin titignan kung ano yung size niya. Kaya gagamit tayo later on ng function na that length. Okay? Okay, so that is initialization. So, nag-initialize tayo ng list na array at ang size niya ay 10. And then, the next thing that we are going to do, that is why I explained also kung ano yung for loop, is we are going to incorporate it later on our um, one-dimensional array sample. So, here we have um, integer i is equal to 0 and then i is less than list.length i++. So, paano natin kukunin ngayon yung list.length dito? So, pa, um, paano natin siya ma-identify? So, basically, here on the initialize value, uh, makikita mo na agad kung ano yung uh, length ng ating um, ng ating array. So, basically, we have 10 here. Ito po yung magiging value niya. Okay? Bakit natin ina-acquire? Makikita natin mamaya. Or bakit natin, bakit pa natin gagamitan ng that length dito kung dati naman siyang naka-initialize? Bakit hindi na lang po 10 yung, 10 yung ilalagay natin dito? Kasi po, if we are going to ask the user to enter the value that he or she would like to know later on, um, hindi na po magiging applicable kasi naglagay ka na agad ng 10 dito. Paano pagpapalitan mo yung 10. Yung user mismo ang mag input kung ano yung size ng array natin. So, hindi na siya ganun, magiging flexible yung program natin. Okay? So, basically, list that length. Yung that length natin is a uh, function that we can use on um, acquiring or on getting the size of the array. So, magiging output nito or magiging um, equivalent ng list that length ngayon is yung number 10 dito sa taas. So, integer i is equal to 0 i is less than 10, i++. plus plus. So, yung ganun na yung magiging output natin. So, basically, we have 0, 1, 2, 9. Gaya nung example kanina. Okay, so, meron ulit tayong ano dito, comment. Sabi niya, process list i and the i plus 1, the element of list. Okay, so, yung sinabi niyang i plus 1 dito is yung update natin, which is incremental. mag a po tayo ng 1, i plus plus. Okay, now, um, the thing that we can uh, also see later on doon sa mga sample programs natin is inputting of data. Yung user mismo yung mag input ng mga data. Hindi po siya, um, hindi na po siya naka, uh, dating naka-declare. Pero doon sa mga other sa samples natin mamaya, naka-declare na siya dati. And then, titignan lang natin kung paano yung algorithm niya. Yung algorithm or yung mga codes na naka-incorporate po doon sa samples natin, yung mga programs natin. Okay, so inputting of data, we can make use of different um, things or your different codes on how to input data. We can make use of scanner, which is the ECS. We can also make use of the buffered reader. And then we can make use also, or if you would like a user interface, pwede natin gamitin yung JOption pin. But we are going to stick with scanner kasi that is the ECS. Okay, kasi console pa lang naman po tayo. Okay, so here, inputting of data. Um, itong mga tatlong code na ito, yung first one, this one, the integer, yung initialization natin, yung for statement natin, and later on, this one. Ayan, so ito, we have list i is equal to console.nextInt. Ayan, sampo nang galing yung console natin. So basically, if you're going to use scanner, you are going to declare the scanner variable. Okay, yung variable na ginamit na, na gagamitin natin yung pangalan niya is console. That is why console po yung nakalagay dyan. And then next int, depende kung ano yung um, data type na gagamitin. Kung double po yung gagamitin natin, syempre papalitan natin yan ng next double. Pero in our case, next int po yung ginamit natin. And then as you can see, Meron siyang nilagay na list and then i. Saan nang galing tong list na ito? Tong list na ito, yan po yung pangalan ng array natin, which will contain the value of letter i. Kung ano yung mag update po dito sa for, um, for statement natin, yun din po yung magiging output ni letter i. So, for example, yung initialize value ni for um, ng integer i is equal to 0. 0 din po yung mag-output uh, ano mag dyan. 
Okay? So, let us also understand that in array, mag start po siya sa number 0. Kasi, yun po yung first index niya. Hindi po siya mag start ng 1. Kaya, mangyayari dito, kaya, ang initialized value dito is 0. Ayan. Kasi yun din po yung first na index ng ating array. So, list 0 is equal to. Yung user po mismo ang mag-input uh, mag ng mga data dito, mag-enter ng data. That is why meron tayong lines of codes na ganito. Okay? And then lastly, we have printing of output. Ayan, magpiprint po tayo ng output. Nilagay ko lang dito po yung ano ha? yung for in uh, for yung for statement po natin. Ayan, kung mag-i-input tayo ng uh, or magpi-print po tayo ng output natin later on kasi nga tapos na tayo nag-input ng data tapos na si user na maglagay ng mga values niya. Ngayon, it is time for us to display the output. That is why we are going to make use of the Java output statement. Ayan, meron tayong Java output statement dito and then as you can see, um ipapakita niya kung ano yung value using this one, using this variable. List and then yung bracket natin na huwag natin kalimutan yung bracket and then the value of letter i and then plus the double quotation marks for spaces okay so um, um hindi pa po buo hindi pa po ito yung pinaka code natin but we are going to uh, i'm going to show you an example using these lines of codes ay uh, hinimay lang natin no um kinategorize lang natin siya para mas maintindihan natin siya later on so those are the things that we need to consider din ito yung mga lines of codes na makikita natin okay so basically i just would like to show you na Ayan, papakita ko na sa inyo yung mga samples natin. Ayan, we have this um, example. Ayan, so this is a one-dimensional loop. Using for loop po muna tayo. And it is uh, the values of the, in the array, integer array A is being declared. Kaya nga sabi, sabi niya dito sa my um, comment natin, declaration and initialization. Okay, so yung integer array A po natin, ang laman po niya is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So, so meron tayong lima. Meron po tayong limang mga values or initial values. And then, we also have here a Java output statement. Sabi niya, one-dimensional array elements are, and then, um, meron din tayong for statement dito. We have for integer i is equal to uh, is equal to 0, and then i is less than a dot length, a plus plus. So, ano yung length ng ating letter a na array? Okay, so we have 1, 10, uh, 2, and then 3, 4, and 5. So, automatically, magiging 5 po yan. So, yung, uh, yung mag-display po dito, for example, no, integer i is equal to 0, i is less than 5, i++. plus plus. So, yung magiging output po yan is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yan. If you would like to count kung ilan yung values, or if you would like to count them, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, magiging value nyan is 5. Uh, let us always um, keep in mind na yung index po ng array po natin ay always starts with number 0. And then, meron tayong curly braces dito, which is not being, um, uh, which is also the same as the examples that I gave. Okay, dun sa ano natin, sa for statement natin. It's also the same. And then, we also have the Java output statement here, wherein uh, dito niya ilalagay or dito niya ipapakita yung output natin. So, may I just um, set this one as the active project para makita natin, para mairan po natin. Okay, so dito sa loob ng Java output statement po natin, we have here a double quotation marks that indicates that this is just a string, but inside... As you can see, meron tayong letter I dito, and then concatenation, plus sign for concatenation. And then, um, we also have here plus, and then AI, yung value ng ating um, uh, array later on. Okay, so kung anong position siya. Okay, so, um, ito po, itong code na ito, or yung mga nakalagay dito, this is uh, just to um, show you Ayan, para may pakita po kung anong array, kung ano po yung um, position ng array na i-display niya. And then, dito sa kabila, itong AI natin, yan po yung values natin. Ayan, so niran po natin siya. Ayan, niran po natin ulit. So, sabi niya dito, one-dimensional array elements are, we have A, 
uh, array at 0. Ayan, A0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, saan niya po na-obtain or saan niya nakuha yung 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 po dito? Okay, nakuha niya po yung 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 dito, dito sa ating 4 statement. Kasi nga gaya ng sabi ko kanina, mag i start siya sa 0, mag i initialize siya sa 0, and then kukunin niya yung automatically yung length niya, which is 5. Okay? Saan nakuha yung 5 ngayon? Nandito po sa, sa 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Kung bibilangin natin yan, 5 po yan. And then, so ano ba yung mga numbers na less than 5 kung mag start ka sa 0? Kaya magiging 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ayan. So, kinuha niya po and then yung update natin is increment. So, paano na pag naging 5 na po yung value niya? Okay, pag naging 5 na po yung value niya, magpo-false na po siya kasi hindi na siya less than 5. Magi, dapat equal 5 yan, ba Dapat mayroon siyang equal sign na ganyan. Pero, wala naman po. Kaya, magiging false na siya, mag stop na siya sa may pang-apat na array. And then, yung 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 dyan, basically, nakuha po siya dito. Kasi, ang um, at 0 index ay 10. Ang one, uh, pang 1 po na index, we have 20. 2 na index, 30. 3 na index, we have 40. And uh, 4 na index, we have 50. That is why na-acquire na po, kinuha niya po agad-agad. So, kung ano ulit yung value niya, for example, 0 yan, yun din po yung magiging value ni letter I dito. Same din po dito sa value niya. Ayan, kaya ito po yung magiging output po natin. Paulit-ulit lang po yan, mag-for loop lang po yan, or mag-loop lang po yan until such time na naging false po yung yung ano natin dito, yung condition po natin. So, same din po, pag ang ginamit po natin is a string. So, gumamit tayo ng ano dito, no? Dito sa may one-dimensional loop, gumamit lang po tayo ng integer, pwede rin po tayong gumamit ng string dito. So, basically, we have string str. Same lang din po yung process niya. The only difference is that we are going to make use of words or combinations of uh, letters or numbers or alphanumeric. So, ganito po ang pag-declare pag string pong pinag-uusapan natin. Let us see the difference. So, integer and then we all, we have brackets here and then yung letter A sa side niya. Pero pag string po ang i-declare natin, we have string and then yung, uh, yung iconic natin na bracket for array and then the name or the variable name of your array and then meron tayong word na new string and then yung dalawang brackets natin and same pa din na gumamit tayo ng dalawang um, curly braces just to contain yung mga uh, words na i-display later on. So, here we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, kung bibilangin ulit natin ilan ba yung length ng ating array. So, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We have 4 we have 4 um, initial values, yung length ng ating array and then but if you would like to um, get yung index niya hanggang 3 lang po kasi mag start tayo sa 0. So, 0, 1, 2, 3. Hanggang 3 lang po siya. Ayan. So, yung ano na naman po natin, yung condition po natin is less than str.length and then we'll start at 0 and then the update is incremental. mag a po tayo ng 1. So, pag um, ayan, niran po natin yan. Ayan. So, we, as you can see, hindi po siya system.out.println, system.err.println, and then same lang din po pag nag-update po yung ating value ng i, ganun din po dito sa ating Java output statement. So, as you can see, same lang din po doon sa first example natin, no? So, these are the elements of one-dimensional array. So, one, two, three po na pababa. If you would like to make use of print, okay lang din po. So, let's try. Ayan. So, kung ganun po yan. Pag pa horizontal po yung kanyang output. So, it's very simple, no? That is how we are going to use the four statements sa ating one-dimensional array. But, as you can see, yung mga values niya kasi is dati nang naka-declare. Um, naka okay? So, now, we ha uh, may we have another example. Ayan. Na gagamitan natin ng, uh, ng scanner. Ayan. So, medyo madami-dami itong ating mga codes. And if you would like to use a scanner, um, gumamit tayo ng scanner, please do not forget to include import java that util that scanner dito sa ating code. Ayan, huwag natin kakalimutan yan. And at the same time, let us not forget to put this one. Scanner console is equal to new scanner system that in. Itong console na ito, we can change it, but I would like to use the console. So that is just a variable name, but if you would like to change it later on, pwede lang po. 
And then, do not forget to put a label for the user to know kung ano yung i-input niya, kung ano yung i-enter ng ating user. Kasi usually, yung mga codes natin, kung walang mga labels, hindi alam ng mga user kung paano magpa-function yung program na yun. Okay? It's so, uh, so, to be safe, maglagay na lang po tayo ng mga labels. So, sabi niya dito, system.out.println, how many numbers would you like to enter? So, basically, um, the program is asking you, uh, how many numbers would you like to enter? I Ayan, so, uh, meron din tayong integer a is equal to console.next input dito. Ayan, so, tinatanong kasi ng program kung ilan yung or kung um, ilan yung mga numbers na i-input natin. No? Um, that is why meron po tayong ganito to contain yung ilalagay or yung i-enter ng user na integer, yung whole number. Hindi po tayo pwedeng uh, mag maglagay ng 5.5, ayan yung mga 2.3, dapat po whole number. Kaya integer po yung ginamit nating data type. And then, of course, we have here the console that next int. Ayan, console is from here. And then, next int po tayo. Enter lang po natin. And then, ayan, uh, so mag input yung user po. Ayan, mag input yung user ng mga number na gusto niyang i-enter. And after that, ayan, meron tayong initialize value dito. Okay, let's consider this line of code. Ayan, so integer list is equal to new int a. Okay, yung list po natin dito, maglalagay ako ng ano, ng ng comment para maintindihan po natin. Yung list po dyan, this is the list is the name uh, of our array. Yan po yung pangalan ng array natin. And at the same time, kung papansin ninyo, walang length dito, walang nakalagay na word or numbers. Walang nakalagay na number na nag indicate nung length ng i, ng i manipulate nating array. So basically, yung letter A po dito, saan natin nakuha ito? So yung letter A po dito nakuha po natin dito sa may um, dito sa may uh, code dito. Yung variable name natin is letter A dito. So basically, kung ano yung gustong ilagay ng user na numbers o na ano yung gusto ng user na i-enter na number, yun din po yung magiging value nito. So for example, nag-input ako ng 5 or nag nag uh, na pinindot ko yung keyboard ko ng 5 5 din po yung magiging value ng letter A po dito at at the same time pati yung mga paggagamitan ko ng letter A na variable later on ay maapektuhan so yan po yung magiging length ng ating um, array so hindi po pwedeng gumamit ng mga decimal ng string dapat po ay integer for whole number and lagay ko din ah uh, din po dito so and a is the container for um length ayan yung length natin okay so we we also have here a java output statement sabi niya system that output print line please enter and then we have here list that length number so basically yung list that length natin dito yan din po yung ating uh, letter a ayan kung ano po yung nilagay ng ating user so yan po yung tinatawag na list that length bakit hindi letter a ma'am yung ilagay mo it's okay kasi ina-acquire niya kung ano yung magiging size kung ano yung magiging length ng ating array kasi nilagay mo naman siya dito sa my initialize value natin yung initialization natin so automatic na yan kukunin niya kasi ginamit mo naman yung list na word which is the name of our array okay next ayan so lagyan lang natin ng comment para mas ma makuha po natin yung thought niya ayan um, it will uh, will us will us um numbers the numbers ayan it will ask the numbers no kung ano yung mga gusto mong input later on so ilan yung gusto mong input ayan mga ganun okay so please enter so for example 5 yung in-input na ating user so please enter 5 numbers yung maglalagay or mag the display and then we have here a for a statement. As you can see, same lang din po dito sa may one-dimensional loop na ginawa natin a while ago. Or explain natin a while ago. The only difference is that wala siyang mga curly braces. Ayan, for integer x is equal to 0, x is uh, less than list that length, x plus plus. So again, magdedepende po yung list that length po natin dito doon sa in-input ng ating user. And then, uh, we also have here list x is equal to console next int. So same lang din po dito, no? Same lang din po dito, kinonsider niya. Ayan, kinonsider niya kung ano yung... Uh, 
kung mag input po tayo, no? So, here, we have here, list x is equal to console.next int. So, kukunin mo na, eh, mag input na yung, yung user kung ano yung mga numbers na gusto niyang um, i-display later on. Or, in our case, dito sa ating code, ire-reverse natin siya. Ayan, ire-reverse natin yung word, yung order niya lang. Ayan, so, for example, yan. Sabi ng user, how many numbers would you like to enter? Nag-enter siya ng 5, di ba? And then, sabi dito, um, please enter 5 numbers. Ayan, and then, oh, ayan. So, yung list that length, na-pick up na niya yung um, 5 numbers, o yung 5 na value mo. And then, at the same time, ito, magiging 5 na siya. Limang beses kang mag input ng number mo kasi kinonsider niya or kinuha na niya agad-agad yung value ni x. Ayan. So, 0. So, for example, 5 yan, no? 5 yung in-input ni user. mag start tayo sa 0. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so kung mag start tayo sa 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, kung papansinin mo, 5 values pa din po yun. Okay, so limang uh, 5 times or times, times the user will input or or enter a number. Ayan. And then, we also have here system.out.println This is just for a space. Ayan, para sa space lang po yan. Um, and then, we also have system.out.println The numbers are these are just uh, for, this is just for a label. Ayan. So, ipapakita niya niya. After niya i-process, ipapakita the numbers are, ayan, i-display niya kung ano yung mga uh, uh, input nat or in-input ng ating user. But, here, as you can see, we can, uh, we will also use another for statement for that. Ayan, so, same lang din po, same lang din po yung ano natin, for statement natin, if we try to compare doon sa taas, pareho lang din po, kasi ang kukunin mo lang dyan ay yung 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ayan. And then, kung ano yung value ni letter I, yun din po yung magiging value ni list dito. Maglulup po yan hanggang sa maging false yung ating sagot. And then, we also have here, list I, which will be uh, displaying kung ano yung in-input ng ating user. So, for example, sa ang in-input ni user I 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, of course, ang magdi-display dito is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ayan. And then we also have system that out that print line another uh, for your, for another for next line lang para merong space para hindi magulo yung ating output and then we also have here a label sabi niya reverse order and then we also have for statement here as you can see iba na yung for statement natin hindi na siya gaya nung first two yan magkaiba lang kanyang ang kanyang variable name yung letter x uh, yung integer first for statement natin dito gumamit ng letter X, and then yung second for statement natin gumamit ng letter I, and then the third for statement natin gumamit ng letter S. So basically, bakit kaya, bakit kaya mag or bakit kaya iba yung ating for statement dito? Okay, so basically magre-reverse kasi tayo. For example, ang, in, ang nilabas po dito is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ayan, ang lalabas naman dito sa isa, kasi i-reverse nga niya, ang lalabas dito is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ayan, yan po yung magiging output niya. And dapat meron siya mga label para alam natin kung para saan yung mga numbers na lumalabas sa output natin. So, to achieve this one, we have this um, initialized value. Sabi niya, S is equal to A minus 1. So, hindi lang po tayo pwedeng maglagay ng mga whole numbers. Pwede rin, na, uh, pwede rin tayo maglagay ng mga conditions or mga operators as long as um, uh, feasible po siya. Ayan, as long as probable po siya. Ayan, we have here um, A. Ayan, yung A po natin, saan po siya nakuha? Yung letter A natin, di ba, yan po yung how many numbers would you like to enter? Ayan, yung magiging size ng ating array, no? Uh, for example, naglagay siya ng 5. Bakit ako mag, uh, maglalagay ng minus 1? 5 minus 1. Kasi, di ba, sa ating array, pag, pag, pag array ang pinag-uusapan natin, for example, nag-input ako ng 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pag index po ang pinag-uusapan natin, always start yan ng 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ayan, mag-always start yan ng 0. That is why um, naglagay ako ng, uh, naglagay tayo ng minus 1 dyan. So that, mafollow pa rin niya yung indexing po natin. So, wag po tayong ma-confuse 
doon. So basically, hindi yan magi start ng 5, kundi magi start yan ng 4. Magiging 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Bakit naging hanggang 0? Kasi meron tayong condition dito na less than or equal to 0. And then, bakit naging dec uh, decrement? Ayan, paano ba na naging uh, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0? Kasi yung update natin is minus minus, which is it will uh, um, decrease to 1. Ayan, decrement po yung ginamit natin dito, which is uh, ang kabaliktaran ng I++ dito, which is uh, mag a ka ng 1. So, mag-ano mag siya ng 1, no? So, yung output po natin dito, this one, yung integer s is equal to a minus 1, s is greater than or equal to 0, and then s minus 1, uh, s minus minus. So, for example, yung value ng letter a na in-input natin is 5, of course, magiging 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0. Yan po yung magiging output po natin. So, let's try for us to understand better kung ano po itong sinasabi natin, uh, kung paano yung gumagana itong ating program. Ayan, so sabi niya, how many numbers would you like to enter? Mag-input tayo na, for example, 6. Ayan. So, please enter 6 numbers. As you can see, nag-update na siya agad-agad. So, 1. Ayan, mag, ano tayo? Maglagay tayo 89, 3, 4, 5. Ayan. So, as you can see, ayan, i-ano lang natin, no? Ayan, pa itaas lang natin. Ayan, as you can see, here is the output. Ayan, how many numbers would you like to enter? Yan yung code natin kanina. Nag-input yung user ng 6. At the same time, nag-update na agad-agad. Please enter 6 numbers. So, nag-input tayo ng 6 na initial values or 6 na numbers. And then, dito sa baba niya, sabi niya, the numbers are. So, dinisplay niya lang yung mga numbers. But as you can see, di, pinakita niya rin kung ano yung mga index ng mga numbers na yun. Diyan po yung gamit ng ating for statement. Yung for, uh, second for statement po natin na dyan. So, sabi niya, least 0 is 1, ayan, 7, 89. Pero, kung titignan naman natin dito sa taas, wala tayong nilagay na least 0, least 1, least 2. Okay, so, yan po yung trabaho ng ating for statement. At the same time, dito sa ating Java output statement. Ayan, yun yung word na list natin. And then, in-incorporate natin yung ating letter I from the for statement para maging 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ayan. Okay, and then... So, we have here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then, re in reverse order, we have list 5 is equal to uh, list 5. And then, 4, 3, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ayan. So, 5, 4, 3, 89, 7, 1. So, uh, ni-reverse niya lang po yung in-input ng user. So, yan po yung gamit ng ating uh, program. So, ito po yung um, one of the... Uh, basic example ng ating one-dimensional array. You just have to play with the codes. Ayan. Uh, just like this one. And kung ano po, kung yung simple lang po, yung simple lang na program, we can do it. Yung reverse na, um, na reverse na numbers. Ayan. So, we can do it uh, using simple codes. But if we are dealing with one-dimensional array, ganito po yung gagawin natin. Kasi you are going to make you uh, make sure na ini-incorporate po natin yung array natin. Okay? Another example. Ayan. Another example we have here. Ayan. So, we are going to find a particular number. But, here on our code, we are also going to make use of the uh, scanner, ayan, i, ano, i-set ko lang siya as active project, and then may I just explain, ayan, meron tayong scanner, util scanner, let us not forget about that, and then dito sa code nito, ayan, meron na tayong nilagay agad-agad, or dineclear agad-agad na integer array, and then integer key, we also make use of the for statement, and then we also have if statement here, and then dito sa baba, Ayan, nandito po yung uh, uh, partner ng ating scanner. We make use of the AA. And then, meron tayong Java output statement, which uh, includes the label, which key would you like to find? And then, magde-declare tayo ng integer array 1. Meron siyang laman na 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, and 90. So, ilan po yung magiging length ng ating array? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, we have 6 arrays. And then, Dito, meron tayong integer key is equal to aa.nextint wherein it will ask you, di ba? It will ask you which key would you like to find. So, tayo po yung maglalagay kung ano po yung um, kung ano po yung uh, number yan, na hahanapin natin. Okay? So, 
and we, we also have here a Java output statement, system that output print line, and then the display na yung key. For example, ang in input mo is 50, magiging 50 is found at index, and then hahanapin ng code na to kung nasaan yung key na yan. Okay? So, yung key na sinasabi natin ay yung initial values. Kung ano lang po yung nilagay natin na initial values dito, yun lang din po yung hanapin natin. Kung wala po tayong, or kung wala yung number na uh, nilalagay, or kung wala po yung hinahanap natin na number dito sa initialized value, hindi po yan mag-work. Okay, so for example, no, we are going to find yung numbers na, uh, number 90. Ayan, hanapin natin kung nasang index siya. Pag index pong pinag-uusapan natin, yun yung 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ayan. So, mahanapin natin yung 90. Run lang po natin yung program. Ayan. So, which key would you like to find? We have 90. Enter. So, 90 is found at index 5. So, tama naman kasi mag-start tayo sa 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, ganun lang po siya uh, gumagana. Ayan, so yan po yung ating linear search. Ang tawag po natin dito is linear search. And then, as you can see, no, um, in, yung initialized value or yung value ng ating array is already declared. Um, just a tip, kung maghanap po tayo or maglalagay po kayo or magtetest po kayo, huwag po natin ilagay yung number na wala dito sa ating uh, values. Ayan, so that is for linear search. You just have to, if you would like to um, try it later on. You can also try it using different editors. Uh, here, I am using jcreator. No? You can use Jedona, uh, Net, uh, NetBeans, Eclipse, and other editors that you can find. And we also have another example here. Okay, so may I just read? Meron na siya mga comments dito, no? There are already um, included uh comments here that we can check it uh, we can check later on okay so as you can see here on our linear search basically linear search you're going to look or you are going to find for something and you're going to look for the value of something okay here we have and stop muna natin yung program so we have declared um, four integers c and search as array and then ayan we are also making uh, going to make use of this scanner and then, sabi niya, enter number of elements. Ayan, yung ano natin, yung, yung um, code kung saan mag input yung user, kung ilan yung number of elements. Ayan, and then, so, enter those elements. Say, same lang din po yung ano ha, same lang din yung code na ito dito. Same, yung, same lang yung explanation niya. Ayan, so sabi niya, enter those Element. So, kukunin niya agad-agad kung ano yung input ng user dito. So, for example, nag-input siya ng 2. Gusto niya ng 2, eh, di magiging 2 rin po dito. And then, we also have here, we have here a for statement for that. Ayan, for the indexing, we have 0 and then less than n, C++ yung kanyang condition. Same lang din dun sa example natin kanina. And then, sabi niya, enter value to find. Ayan, maghanap tayo ng value kung saan natin siya hanapin. And then, sabi niya, searching, meron tayong for statement dito, and another statement, if. Ayan, meron tayong conditional statement. If RAC is equal to search, and then system that, kung ma-justify niya or maging true po yung ating condition dito, ayan, so kung present siya, mag-print mag, uh, po ito. System that out that print line search, plus is present at location. Ayan, ipapakita niya kung anong location siya present. And then, so, so kung nag-input din tayo ng um, hindi kas kabilang doon sa code natin, ayan, so sasabihin niya, element search isn't present. Ayan, so that is another if statement for that. We have here a Java output statement, system that out of print line search plus um, plus, and then isn't present in array. So, ano po yung gamit nating if dyan? Yung if po is just for condition. Ayan, it is a for condition kung mag po yung ano natin, yung condition natin. Ito po yung if print niya. Does, kung mag, uh, mag false po siya, ito po yung ad display ng ating program. So, these are the lines of code for the second example on linear search. Ang um, ulitin ko lang po, Ang ginagawa ng code na ito ay just to look 
for a particular element, no? So, let us try para mas maintindihan po natin or para mas ma-appreciate po natin kung ano yung ginagawa ng program na to. Okay, so let's try. Ayan. Okay, enter number of elements. Ayan, enter, enter number of elements. Pwede tayong magigay ng 4. So, enter those 4 elements. We have 34, 56, 99, and 7. Okay, enter value to find. So, for example, I would like to find 4, 7. So, 7 is present at location 4. So, yun po yung ginagawa ng code na yan. Hahanapin niya kung pang ilan o kung ano yung location ng ating um, number. Okay, we will try another one na hindi present doon sa nilagay natin. So, 5. So, for example, yung ano na lang. Yung mas madali, 3, 3 na lang para mas madali nating ano ayan 3 enter number of elements enter those 3 elements 1 2 6 ayan so enter value to find we have 6 so 6 is present at location 3 ayan so tama nga naman pang pangatlo siya so basically itong linear search natin yung dinisplay niya na 6 is present at location 3 ha i just would like to ano reiterate that yung location na sinasabi po dito, hindi po yung index po natin. Kung index po yung pinag-uusapan niyan, 2 po yung magiging sagot niyan. Pero pag location po yung sinasabi natin, kung saan talaga siya naka-place, na, nasa pangatlo lang po talaga yung initial initial uh, initial values natin, kaya 3 po yung sinagot niya dito. Ayan. So, it's not the same with the first example no, na mag start siya sa indexing niya indexing niya. Pero, ito sa location po kasi ang pinag-uusapan natin. And, if you would like to try na wala, okay, so for example, 3 ulit, and then 45, 6, 7, and then kung hanapin mo yung 0, sasabi niya, 0 isn't present in I. So, yan po yung gamit ng ating if statement. Yan. So, hindi niya mahanap kaya sasabi niya, 0 isn't present in Ari. So, napaka-convenient po ng ating if statement pag ganito pong pinag-uusapan natin. Yan. So, meron siyang diversion, no? Pag naging false po yung condition. Okay? Uh, if you would like to try later on this code, ayan, you just have to take a screenshot and try it later on on your favorite editor or Java editor, no? Here is the code. Ayan, I will just scroll it and mag-take na lang kayo ng screenshot later on and then try natin. Ayan, okay. So, another thing that we can do using the, uh, the one-dimensional array, we can also use it for um, arranging, arranging our output in ascending or descending order. So, let's try. Ayan, let's see. So, ito po yung ating code for ascending and for ascending order let's see we have here the comments for us to to be guided and we also use a scanner for this sabi niya initialize the objects ayan nag initialize po tayo ng object we have integer n i j at saka temp so automatically pwede na natin siyang gamitin anytime kasi naka initialize na siya we also have integer array or integer r and then we also have size na 50 ayan 50 po yung ating size Ayan, and then, uh, sabi niya, scanner scan, yes. The name of our scanner will be scan. And then, yan po yung i-call natin later on. So, sabi niya, system that out that print, enter number for the array elements. And then, of course, do, um, meron tayong comment dito, sabi niya, enter number of elements to end, uh, enter number of elements to input or to enter later on. Ayan, so ilan yung numbers na gusto mo, or ilan yung elements na gusto mong input later on. And then, system.out.print line, enter, and yan. Same lang din po dun sa mga dating example natin. Yung example natin kaninang nauna, this one. Ayan. Okay. So, gagamit pa rin po tayo ng for statement for this one. Ayan. So, kukunin niya yung value ni letter n ngayon dito. Kung ano yung number of elements na in-input natin. So, for example, nag-input ka ng 5, automatically 5 din po yung mapapakita dito. At the same time, this one. Ayan. And then, so, this uh, line of code is for indexing. Ayan, sa index natin. So, mag-start siya sa 0. Ayan, kasi yan po yung array natin nyo. Yung, yung array, mag-start tayo sa 0 pag indexing po ang pinag-usapan natin. Pero pag location 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ganun po yung location natin. Okay. So, next one we have here. Ayan, ito po yung code natin for sorting of array elements from highest to 
of ascending. Ayan, highest to lowest. Ano? Lowest to highest. Ayan, lowest to highest po tayo. So, ascend siya. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pag descending naman po, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ayan, sabi niya we have here, sorting array elements. We have the Java output statement for our label. And we have for loop. Ayan, nested for loop here. So, yung condition natin is either n minus 1. Kung ano po yung input natin, yan din po yung magiging value niya. And then, for j is equal to 0, we have here n minus i minus 1. So, basically, yung value, for example, ng letter n is 5. And then, yung first na value na letter i is 0. So, 5 minus 0 minus 1. So, magiging 4. And we also have here uh, an if statement. And so we have here an if is if, if, uh, statement later on. And then, um, dito sa baba, we have another label. Yan, system that out that print are sorted successfully. So, overall, yung code natin dito, these lines of codes will be uh, used for sorting of the array elements that we are going to input later on. And then, uh, here, ayan, sabi niya, array in ascending order. Now, we are going to display na kung ano yung magiging output natin later on. In ascending order na siya. Okay, so uh, to try to understand this better, ayan, so let's see kung ano yung ginagawa ng code. I just want to uh, change. Ayan, it change lang po natin yung uh, ating... Ayan, active project. Ayan, so, kung jcreator po ang ginagamit natin, always make sure to change the active project. Ayan, so, sabi niya, enter number for the array elements. Okay, 3. Enter 3 numbers. We have, so, 1,000. Uh, 1,000, 1, 45. Okay, sorting array. Array sorted successfully. Uh, sorted list in ascending order. So, sabi natin kanina, pag ascending, no? Start at smallest to biggest. Ayan, so, meron tayong uh, value kanina na 1,001 at saka 45 ngayon. Si North na niya in ascending order. Kaya, ang naging value natin is 1, 45, and 1,000. So, ayan. Post. Let's try another one. Ayan. Let's try another one. Ayan. So, 5. For example, 5. Maglagay lang tayo ng mga numbers. 1, of course, mag zero, 56, 5. Ayan. So, automatically, si North na niya. So, nag-start siya 0, 1, 5, 56, and 232,434. Okay? So, if you would like to try later on this line of code, I will just um, scroll it up. Ayan. So, you just have to take a screenshot and try it later on on your editor. Ayan. So, screen, uh, scroll lang po natin siya. Ayan. So, just try. Just, just try this code. Uh, if na pagana po natin, then well and good. Ayan. So, yan po yung ascending natin. And then, we also have the descending order. No? Same lang din po doon sa code natin sa ascending. But the only difference is that, uh, of course, yung code natin is pa from, um, from highest to lowest po siya. Okay, so let's start, no? Gumamit din po siya ng scanner dito. Ayan, so, same lang din po na nag-initialize uh, tayo ng mga integer, and at saka temp. Ayan, so, tatanong ka pa rin, enter number of elements you want in array. So, and then, after that, meron tayong enter all the elements. Ayan, so, gagamit pa rin po tayo ng for statement at saka if statement, just like uh, um, a while ago. Ayan, so, we have these lines of codes. These lines of codes will work for the descending order. Ayan, so, meron tayong for integer i is equal to 0, i is less than n, i plus plus. Ayan, so say, just a brief introduction or just a brief um, discussion on the examples ha, para matry naman natin later on. Ayan, so, so here, dito sa baba, same, same lang dito po dito sa ating, ano, um, sa ating example dito. Ayan, so same lang din po siya. The only difference, kung papansinin natin, are you, yung mga values ng ating for statement. So here on the nested for, yung ano, dun sa second na for natin dito, as you can see, is less than n. Ayan, so yung example natin dito, we have n is uh, n minus i minus 1. Ayan po yung mga uh, difference later on. But if you have a screenshot, ayan, so you can uh, compare it later on, no? Ayan, and then system that out that print descending order. So this code is also 
um, responsible for showing you and for showing you the output okay so to check to check this code and to check this code let us try and so completed na siya Oops. and saan na yun? yung ating descending order descending order we just have to find for the descending order na ano natin So let's try. Okay, so enter number of elements you want in the array. For example, we have 4. And enter all the elements. 45, 2, 3, 4. And so descending order, we have 45, 4, 3, 2. So yan po yung ating uh, descending order. So uh, automatically, na sort na niya yung ating output. So pakita ko lang po ulit yung ating lines of codes. Ayan. And so we have here, you just have to take a screenshot and try it later on on your favorite editor. Okay. Okay. And then lastly, we have the binary search. And so binary search natin. Okay, so same as the linear search, no? Halos pareho lang sila. Kasi hanapin niya lang kung anong key. Ulit yung uh, gusto kung anong key or anong index. Dito kasi sa may ano natin kanina, linear search natin kanina, location po yung hinahanap niya. Basically, pag sa array, mag start ka sa 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yan po yung location niya. Pero dito sa may binary search, sa index naman po tayo. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yung pinag-uusapan po natin. So, for example, so let's try this program po muna para makita natin. Ayan. So, for example, we have here, Sabi niya yung output niya, element found at index 1. Yan pa lang yung, uh, yung, yan lang pala yung output natin para dito. Sabi niya, element found at index 1. Kasi, dati na natin diniklear yung kanyang laman at dati na natin diniklear kung ano yung hahanapin niya. Okay, so, uh, para makita natin, tignan natin itong ating codes natin. Okay, so we have here public class binary search. Ayan, wala tayong scanner. Hindi po mag input na yung ating user. Dati na siyang naka-initialize. Dati na siyang nakapaloob sa ating program. Sabi niya, find out if a key x exists in the sorted array A or not using binary search algorithm. Okay, and then search space is A from left, uh, left to right. Ito po yung code para doon. Ayan. And then, this code naman, well, uh, till search space consists at, of at least one element, we find the mid value in the search space and compares it with the key value. Ayan. And then, this one naman, ayan, so key value is found, if key value is found, ayan, we use this code, return mid. Ayan, so yung mid po natin, ito yan, left plus right divided by 2. And then, discard all elements in the right search space including the mid element, else if, discard all elements in the left search space, including the mid element. And then, meron tayong uh, uh, another one, x the, if x doesn't exist in the array, return negative 1. And then, we still have another um, here, yung code natin. So, integer a, ito na yung i-declare natin yung value ng ating array na a. So, yung value niya is 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. Ayan. And then, yung hahanapin daw natin is 5. Ayan yung 5. Nakadeclare na kasi siya. So, kung gusto mong palitan yan, for example, gusto mong hanapin yung 8. Ayan. Kung, kung titignan natin, it's very simple yung ating output, no? Isang line lang ng, ng output natin. Pero, very, ano pala yung code natin. Medyo may kahabaan din pala yung code natin. Eh, konti lang naman yung output. Hanapin niya lang kung ano yung position niya. That is just for binary search, no? Halos same lang din siya dito sa my linear search. Ayan, yung only difference is that gagamitin natin yung index instead the location. And then, ayan, so hanapin niya, sabi niya A, meron tayong function binary search, and then A, comma, key. So yung A natin, kukunin niya yung laman ng ating initialized value. And then we also have key, ayan, nilagay natin ay number 8. So pag... Um, mahanap po natin siya element found at index ayan. so sinabi niya dito element found at 1 ayan, nilagay niya dyan ng 1 pero pag hindi natin siya mahanap 
hindi mahanap ng program ang sasabihin niya ay element not found in the array. So, pag in-input ng or pag 3 natin yan, sasabihin niya element found at index 3 kasi nga ta, mga mag-start tayo sa 0. 0, 1, 2, and t. So, pang 3 po itong si number 8. Okay? So, ayan po yung mga programs. no I just uh, shared yung mga different programs that we can uh, try later on using the one-dimensional array. Although it was not explained thoroughly, yung hanggang sa ano na, hanggang dito lang yung talagang na-explain natin thoroughly kasi we can also apply itong mga codes, lines of codes na ito dito sa ating linear search, ascending, descending, at saka binary search. If you already know the basic and medyo may idea na tayo or meron na tayong idea on how to do the particular things. But just for the sake of trying, no, if you would like to try and if you would like to um, also experience the use of one-dimensional array, I also shared uh, different examples using the one-dimensional array that you can try later on. Okay, so these are for the linear search. We have two examples for that. Ayan. We have two examples for um, linear search and we also have for uh, ascending and descending. Ayan. For ascending po natin, another role. Ayan. So, we have the ascending code for the descending order. And descending order natin and then binary search which is also the same with the linear search. But the only difference is the um, usage of index and the location. Okay, so if you have any questions or if you have any uh, clarifications with the use of the one-dimensional array, do not hesitate to ask me and I will try my best to answer them. Okay? So, thank you for listening and I hope you learned something valuable today. Okay, good day and God bless.